Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now this is another tutorial I'm gonna do and this will be the first of I hope a series of tutorials on how to design FPV frames. I already did one on designing parts but let's start with the basics and some frame design. We, just to take a step back, I think we have a pretty cool community of open source frame designers at the moment. Uh, a lot of things on Thingiverse. You can see here Alex Avant's designs. He started with the pickle. So, so much cool stuff. You can just get for free on Thingiverse. I have a bunch of designs that I did. And there's like a ton of remixes and variations and all sorts of, uh, of different designs you find. And I think the more people participate in this and the more people uh, share and enjoy designs, the better it is for the hobby and for the community. So, what I'd like to do is today show you how to design a, a very simple frame. Perfect for the first frame you might be designing which is a 65 millimeter toothpick, just for example, like the, the pickle by Alex uh, Avant and um, similar to my Sanchez design, but to be honest, I never designed a non 3D printed uh, 65 millimeter toothpick. So let's go ahead and design one of those classic OG 65 millimeter toothpick style frames in Fusion 360. Okay, so step one is to design the or sketch the basic dimensions of the layouts of this frame we are designing. And here we need to take a, a first design decision that will be which sort of uh, quad geometry we use. In my opinion, there's basically four basic uh, layouts we can choose from. Either a true X where the quad is as long as wide, we can do a stretch X, which is a Typically for racing, to get better airflow on the rear props, we can go for a wide X or H design, which is wider than long, which uh, is quite common in Cineworks and freestyle frames to have the props out of view and more space for a bigger sort of bus style main body. And another quite uh, rather extreme layout would be a dead cat. That's something that isn't really re relevant for our 65 millimeter toothpick. This is if we have a smaller body with pretty big props or in general big props like 7 inch, we can move the front props apart from each other to the outside, the rear props further to the rear and closer together. So we sort of get the props out of view. That's the whole purpose of this design is to have no props in view even if you have very big props or these um, sort of split type cameras where you're gonna have the HD camera sitting quite low in the frame and you don't want to have props in view. But in my opinion, the most relevant for a 65mm toothpick is still the True X, because we are going to cut this out of a single carbon plate. It will just make it easier to have continuous fiber and cut things along the weave. But um, I'm going to talk a bit more about this in a second. Now let's just go back to Fusion and create our first sketch. So we go here and create plane, create sketch, select one of these planes. Doesn't matter which one you use. Just put it on the wall here. And the first thing I do is go to create and create a center rectangle. Put it right in the middle of the coordinate system that's important. Now just randomly create anything. And then create center diameter circles. So right on the corners of this rectangle with a 65 millimeter diameter because that's our prop size. So for those, you can also click C on your keyboard to make it faster. It's a little shortcut. C, place this here, 65, C, 65. And then the, the size of a quad frame is usually me um, measured along the diagonal length here. So I'm going to put a sketch dimension in here. And let's go with uh, 100 millimeters. And we see that's too close. 105 seems to work and I forgot one thing <laughs> sorry I since I want to have a true X I want um, this side of this rectangle to be exactly as long as this side so I select both of them right click select equal now they are equal length and as you can see 105 seems to work um, let me just quickly check how much space we have between the props so we want to have at least like two or three millimeters here uh, and this is nine millimeters, that's a lot. So we can go a little bit smaller. 
Let's try 100 meters. Yeah, maybe it's just uh, the smaller the better. In this case, I don't want to waste any space. So let's just go for 100 so we're safe. So this is our basic layout now. This is what we're going to use to orient ourselves while designing. Now I can um, simply exit this sketch now. This is done. So basic layout for our design. Now since this is a quite simple design for this tutorial, a 65mm toothpick, we can go ahead and design the arms and the motor mounts. Now we need to take a little decision again because we need to decide what kind of motor mounts we will include in this design. So these are the typical standards. We have an industry, I mean, it's pretty much standardized, <laughs> more or less. But depending on what kind of quad you will build, as you probably know if you are experienced, you will uh, be able to select a, a standard size of motor mounts. Relevant for a 65mm toothpick are the first three here, 9mm 4 holes, so that means 4 M2 holes along a 9mm diameter circle. There's a 3 hole variation of this, but it's more an old standard, a legacy standard. Amex and Brother Hobby used to use it, they don't use it anymore, so I will uh, disregard this one. Smaller motors than 1102, in my opinion, um, it's not something I'm going to use. And the nice thing, if you are designing your own frame, of course you can take all the design decisions and you can specifically design it around your personal um, choice of components. So don't don't even bother with including too many mounts in your design. You can just uh, select the ones you need and you can come up with a new design variation if you choose to uh, pick other motors with different size of mounts. Um, so let's go for 9mm 4 hole, 12mm isn't relevant for 65mm toothpicks, that's bigger motors, that um, begins to be interesting when we were talking about 3 inch props, but not for 65 so let's go with, uh, with this. Now back in our design we need a new sketch, and I'm going to put this one on the exact same plane, and first project all the things I need from the previous sketch. So you can sort of see the sketch in the background, I just go to... Um, project, to be honest, here, here it is, <laughs> almost forgot, but you can just push P on your keyboard to get into project, and then we select these points here, in the middle of the circle, because that's the ones we want to use, that we need in our sketch, and this will include them in the new sketch. Right, perfect. Now, let's just put a little, clicking L to design a line, let's just put a line here to the center, this is where I'm going to design my arm along, and then I start with pushing C on my keyboard and make a 9mm circle. Some motor mounts have 9mm diameter. Create some lines here to guide myself. And the nice thing is, since this is a true X design, everything is kind of nicely aligned in a 45 or 90 degree angle. So I can just do a little cross here, um, vertical and horizontal. And this will just tell me where to put my motor mounts now. I make some 2.1 millimeter circles, slightly larger than uh, M2, so 2 millimeters, slightly larger by one, uh, 0.1 millimeters, just because there is, if you're machining um, these things, there's some, some tolerances, some variations, so at the motor mounts, it makes sense to make them slightly bigger, so you don't have any problems to enter your screws. Four of these 2.1 millimeter holes, and the, the wires on a motor, if we look at such a motor, they always exit at a sort of 45 degree angle between two of these mounting holes. And that's exactly where they will enter, uh, exit here. So they should follow along the arm nicely. Now, the way uh, you design motor mounts can be... It's basically up to you. People have very different approaches. I'm just going to show you my approach to designing them, and the result will look like the, the ones I always design, but you can take a very different approach here. You can also um, work with only two or three mounting holes, that's a possibility that will allow you to reduce the weight. For this design I will go for, um, for a four hole mount, which in my opinion is still the way to go because the weight savings of just using two mounts aren't really very impressive. 
and I just prefer to have a bit more reliability and not brake motors just for the sake of gaining points, one grams or whatever it's uh, it's gonna run. Safe to have uh, less motor mounts. All right, so what I'd like to do is just put a larger circle around this hole. Let's go for five millimeters, that should be reasonable. So just put larger circles around the mounting hole, because of course it needs material around the hole. And then I like to select this line here and put a another circle on it. Because I mean I want to have some motor protection. If I would just I mean I could already use this as a platform to mount a motor, but it wouldn't have any protection. So usually what I do is just design a sort of uh, pointy pointy tip for the mounts. So creating lines, again pushing L on my keyboard, and now I select the line and the circle, right click, and um, include in, insert a tangent constraint, like this, so that everything is, yeah, that should be it, we have four, more lines, now here, you, you can really get creative with, uh, with designing these sorts of um, motor protections, and we already are pretty much good with our uh, basic outline of the motor mount. Next thing to do is um, to design a basic arm. And in this case, I will really keep it quite simple and just make the arm go to the center here in a 45 degree angle. Why am I doing it that way? Let's go back to my slides. Um, <laughs> I mean, carbon fiber, the, the type of carbon fiber we're using, if you're not using sort of exotic um, quasi-isotrophic fiber, there's it's a sort of weave and the fibers are oriented relative to each other in a 90 degree angle and you want to follow this weave and not interrupt the fiber. So if you're always going for 90 degree angles it will make it quite quite easy. So Imagine the carbon fiber sheet is sitting on this plane here. We can orient um, the one type of fiber along this angle and the other one 90 degree relative to it and it will exactly follow those arms. So the way I design these arms usually is also just include a circle and I'm gonna make these arms uh, five millimeters thick. So I create a five millimeter circle, five millimeters in the center too and then I just connect those with lines and it's L on your keyboard to create a line and make sure there's this little, little um, symbol of uh, them being tangential. Here I have to introduce this constraint and as you can see this already kind of looks like a toothpick arm. <laughs> Now I can play around with the dimensions now if I want this to be pointier and I can make it pointier and uh, we are already good to go for our next step which will be to include mounts for electronics. Now if we look at this uh, here again we have some standards we basically have four 16 by 16 for these micro stacks which I'm not going to use for a 65 millimeter toothpick because I think a whoop board is just much cleaner in that case. Um, in a whoop board, the, um, the mounts here are flipped by 45 degrees and they are one inch usually apart. Now there is some variation between manufacturers here. Sometimes it's 25.5 uh, or 26, so there's a slight variation. If you already know what kind of board you're going to use, just go ahead and measure it. If not, just go for 25.5, that will fit in most of the cases since anyway you're mounting this on rubber mounts, you will have a bit of margin and can slightly bend things <laughs> to to um, to add up to the, the actual size of the board. So 25.5 in my opinion usually works fine. Now 20 by 20 isn't relevant here, I'm not going to put a 20 by 20 stack on a uh, 6 or mm toothpick and uh, of course not a 30 by 30. So back to our design now. Let's include our... And I'm, I, I'll stay in the same sketch here because I want to extrude it all at the same time, create these little lines here to 
help myself guiding everything, uh, fix them. Of course, this fixing stuff is, is important because often in Fusion, by, by accident, you just move things you didn't want to move. I insert a 45 millimeter constraint here, uh, 45 degrees, sorry, sketch dimension. Now the length of this, as we said, should be 25.5 millimeters. And um, that's it. Now, let's include some placeholders for these holes, 2.1. Um, I could use M3 here. Not going to use M3, sticking with M2, because most boards are M2. So 2.1 millimeters. Again, here, let's put a circle around this. And I think I'm just going to link those holes here with the arm by just putting a straight piece of uh, material in here. So, again, I'm using my sort of uh, circle technique here. Let's just this up a little bit. Uh, let's go for three millimeters. That looks good. Same here. Three millimeters. Link those with lines. Another constraint here to make this tangential. Did this work? No, I think. Yes. All right. And as you can see, I'm only designing one arm. So just, um, just one quarter of this design actually, because I will just mirror it. No need to design four arms to do everything four times. Just start with one, mirror it, and then uh, afterwards, if you want to have something that is not symmetric, you can start removing materials. But it's, uh, this is basically how I start my design. So I think we are kind of done with the sketch. Oh, just one thing. Uh, we need to have a hole here in the arm in the middle for the C-clip or screw. 4.5 millimeters usually is a good size for this uh, type of motor. I've included this here in the material list, so 4.5 is my recommendation here. Um, and we are good to go. Sketch is done. Finish the sketch and we can start our first extrude. We can now already go ahead and start extruding things. So basically what you have to do is just select everything you want to extrude. Um, First sketch disappear. All right, I can just select all this. I fast forward it a bit for you. Let's try not to forget anything. And I mean, if you're really uh, doing a a design, especially one that isn't as simple as this toothpick, you will go back and forth a little bit more with your sketch. Where I have to just try out a bunch of different things and see what works. In this case here, it's pretty straightforward, so we are already extruding things. Okay, so we are going for two millimeters of material thickness, which is basically the standard for this size of toothpick. And now, well, you're still not marrying this. <laughs> I really want to get this this arm design done before I mirror it along its uh, vertical and horizontal axis to then end up with four arms. But first thing we have to do before that is take a little look at how the carbon is actually cut. And as you might know, it's sort of a rotating drill. And typically the smallest radius you can use or um, CNC manufacturing services will offer to you is one millimeter. So it basically cuts a two millimeter wide um, cut out in the carbon and the tip of that thing is always round, so one millimeter radius, which means it will not be capable of cutting edges like this one here or this one. It just doesn't work. The minimum radius you need to use in your design is one millimeter, which we have here, for example. So we need to go ahead in our design and take a very close look at it and <laughs> remove all these edges that are not machinable because uh, otherwise our CNC cutting service will not be pleased with what we sent them. So 
I just select one of these edges, go to fill it or click F on my keyboard, same thing. And then you can play around with different uh, radiuses for this, whichever you prefer, three, four, also kind of a design thing. I mean, bigger radiuses will be better for stability, but will add some weight. And again, the smallest you can go is one, so that makes it quite easy. And I'll just do this for the entire arm here and fast forward it again. So let's, let's clean this up. Okay, as you can see, this already looks pretty decent. So I think we are at a point where we can go ahead and mirror this part of the frame. So I go here in the create space, select mirror, choose to select bodies, select the body I want to mirror. And then since I put this in the center of the coordinate system, I can just create a mirror along those planes, click OK. Then I go here on combine, join these two bodies and mirror this thing again along the other plane, combine it and ta-da! <laughs> we made four arms out of one and just had to do the work to design one of them. And again we have to do a little cleanup phase because now after mirroring you can see already we have new um, new edges that need to be modified so what I like to do sometimes I just select one of those click delete to make it disappear and then insert another angle that I deem more appropriate so let's clean this whole thing up again alright so this is already a sort of usable design, but one thing I like to do is actually check the weight of uh, what I did here. So that's quite simple too. Just select the body, right click, go on properties. And now we see this says 24 grams, <laughs> which of course is BS because it assumes that the material is steel and we're not going to use steel. All I need, and um, I don't do this directly in Fusion, I usually just open up uh, an Excel file so I kind of tr can kind of track the evolutions of the weight. I see this is a volume of 3141 millimeters square, so this is uh, 3 centimeters square. And I just open my Excel file, and I already know 1 centimeter square of carbon is 1.6 grams, and here I had. 3.14 so iteration one of this frame is 3.14 grams uh, sorry centimeters square uh, cube centimeters cube did I say square I mean cube of course which means we have a weight of 1.6 I'll call one extra. Hate this. 1.6 multiplied with 3.14, which is 5 grams. Okay. Let's see if we can improve this. So, back to Fusion. And so uh, now I can start just messing around in here to improve things. Already, um, we don't really need four mounts for the FC. It's the first thing I would mess around with so I'll just remove all those fillets and another advantage of removing this mount here is that some of the flight controllers have a USB that is facing down which will be uh, colliding here with this mount so I can just remove it simplify things just put a line in here a line in here finish sketch E for extrude, Whoop, make it disappear, it's cutting, All right, probably already saved a bit of weight, let's update this whole thing, properties, now we have 3.0, okay, not a very impressive uh, 
weight saving. Let's look at our formula C. I want to reuse this. All right, 4.8 grams. Okay, slight improvement. Going back. Okay, what else can we do to make this <laughs> design lighter? Now, as you can see, I, I sort of really made a, a, an X that is uninterrupted. So the fiber is going along the entire length of this arm. What I can do is if I'm messing around in here, I can use the push-pull mode. So um, it's in modify press-pull or Q. I can select some of these faces, select Q on my keyboard and then just say maybe one is one, make it thinner, that could work, Let's say 0.5 and then do this with the other side too. Now the downside is we already mirrored everything so I have to do all of these things <laughs> four times but that's one of the one of the tools you have to modify things after extruding. You can of course, as I did when I removed the mount, go ahead and sketch things to, to modify them. Let's do make this one thinner too. Minus 0.5, same here. All right, let's see how our weight evolved. And of course now you're kind of limited in what you can do without going back to the sketch from the beginning. <laughs> That's always a pain if you realize okay I have to do some really major modifications but you will get quite far with these tools. Uh, you can even modify the arm with here. Okay this one doesn't work. Why can I not make the arms thinner? Probably so if this if you have a tr problem like this, often it's just fillets here. So you can remove them again. And now try again. If we can modify how wide these arms are. Let's make them 0.5. Yeah, now you see now it works. Now to be symmetrical, I could do all of this on the other side too. And this is basically how you can mess around for a while till you reach a good weight or let's say weight stability ratio for your frame uh, three what did I use here two millimeters so I need to have a two millimeter fillet here too and I would have to modify all the other one other arms too of course but this is this is the way of working I I use for my uh, my frame design. Now, actually, we're pretty much done. Apart from you know messing around, optimizing things, and what I really like to do is just print um, print those rough designs in PLA and bend them around. Because I don't know why, but you sort of get a pretty good feeling of uh, weak points and stability of the whole thing if you just have uh, have it printed in PLA and bend it in your hands. Another thing you can do is throw. And now this sounds crazy when you can throw your PLA print against the wall or on the ground. You see where it breaks. It's strange, but usually it breaks in pretty much the same spot where carbon would break. So it will show you if you have a weak spot in your design. Just print out a few out of PLA, throw them on the ground, see where they break. If they always break in the same spot, you found a weak spot you need to improve. You can, of course, also simulate it here in Fusion Simulation. This is a finite element analysis that will allow you to simulate stress in components, but it's topic for another uh, tutorial. But actually, it's um, not even that complicated to do. You can do that too. But I don't know why, but I just got better results or more accurate results by throwing PLA prints to the ground. So it's kind of ghetto low tech solution here. And one last thing I'd like to show you is uh, when you when you want this to be cut out of carbon and you're sending it to a CNC service like uh, CNC Madness or Armiton Productions or any any other, how do you generate a DXF file for them? Now how to do it? Quite simple. Create a sketch. Put this sketch here on this plane. Push P on your keyboard to project. Select the whole body. Click OK. Now I projected all the outlines 
in here. I can remove this, uh, make this body here invisible. As you can see, I just have a sketch with all the outlines. Now I right click this sketch and I can save it as DXF. This is the file you're going to send to the CNC cutting service. You also, it's not 3D anymore, it's a 2D, so you'll have to tell them which material thickness you want to use. Uh, but that's how you do it for a simple design. Just um, extract this DFF and you can send it to a CNC cutting service and have your frame cut. All right, guys, uh, that's it for the simple 65 millimeter toothpick frame design tutorial. Again, I, I hope you found this uh, useful and interesting. And of course, don't hesitate to give me some suggestions on additional tutorials I could do or ways I could improve the way I'm doing this and make it easier to, <laughs> to follow this. Because of course, it's, it's not easy to, um, to capture a design process in a tutorial. And you will see if you design things, and then especially if you want to be innovative, and create new things, it's a lot of just messing around. Trial and error, try, um, scrap, redo, try, scrap, redo, and, but also that's, <laughs> that's also kind of the fun part, just trying out things, trying new things. All right, guys, uh, yep, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.